I've heard that you don't choose your passions, but rather, they choose you. Video log, stuck at waypoint 39. And I must have been at the end of the line or something, because I got picked by some weird ones. But it took me to some cool places, and I met some real life people. It's gonna be a sidewalk truck robot. Hell yeah, man. And pets. And obviously, a healthy dose of technical problems. If I can't get an RTK fix, then I don't really know where to go. And this all started as a friendly neighborhood competition, fueled by a phenomenon known as keeping up with the Joneses. And while we did outcompete the neighbors, probably because they didn't know or care that we were competing, but I like to think they were intimidated by my robot, who was named after this character in the comic books. I don't know how to pronounce his name, so I just call him AP. But there's a problem with AP1. He's trapped in this little circle. And that's because he's got a fixed frame. But phase two, will have no fixed frame, and basically no limits at all. And for that reason alone, it had to exist. But, as usual, there's a problem. No, that's not great. Because I don't really know what I'm doing. That's so good. Let's walk through the game plan, and you'll see what I mean. So like I said, no frame, no limits. And probably zero turn, I guess, for maneuverability. Um, but the real bread and butter of the project uh, is, is that I tease, it's just a saying, bread and butter, it's, just, it's a phrase. Bread and butter? Yes, it's a phrase. But here's the real bread and butter of the project. If you remember in the first video, I teased having some hardware that I didn't really know how to use. Some of you guessed it in the comments that it was GPS with RTK, and that's exactly right. GPS with RTK is basically just a higher accuracy version of regular GPS. But I've never used it at all. I don't know how it works, so it's going to be a little bit of a leap of faith, and if I can't get it to work, then I'm definitely going to be in over my head with this project, at least using GPS technology. And as far as the main controller, there's always options for something like that, but for this, I went with ArduPilot, which is a pretty well-known, fairly mature open source software that has a few different types of hardware that can interface with it. And in this case, I went with a PixHawk um, controller, which, which worked pretty well, but I've not used any of these before either, so there's gonna be learnings here as well. This is awesome. Uh oh. Are you beeping? What happened? The choice to use ArduPilot was a good one. AP2 was pretty much all off the shelf and came together really easy. Well, mostly. And since it's pretty straightforward, I'm not gonna go into the build much. I'll just put up a quick reference picture at the end for anyone who might be making something similar or if you're just curious. And while 3D prints are fine for most of the parts needed, I'm happy to say that I had some backup from JLC CNC who sponsored this video and provided these motor hubs machined from ABS. These allow me to crash AP2 into various stuff and be confident that he won't break. I ordered my parts and they were delivered quickly. The pricing was affordable and the quality and accuracy is really good. I even had threads on my parts which coming from rapid prototypers sometimes need retapped, But these were good. The bolts went right in. They can do one part, they can do a thousand parts, they have three and five axis machines, and there are no weird additional setup fees. So if you want to crash your robot into stuff and be confident it won't break, head over to JLC CNC to get some machine parts. You'll get them quick and at a competitive price. You can use my link in the description below to get $70 off your first order. So check them out. And thank you again to JLC CNC for sponsoring this video. So I came up with the build and design of the frame feeling pretty confident. AP2 is maneuvering really well. He's, uh, he's getting over bumps without any issues. Um, but now it's time for problem number two, which is GPS with RTK. If you look through the documentation, most of it suggests, you know, best case two centimeters of positional accuracy just from the GPS. So that's like an inch. And I'm hoping that if we combine that with just the overall control of the robot that we can have maybe not more than a few inches of overall positional error. One inch of accuracy from GPS? How is that possible? These signals are coming from space. We got to talk about this. So regular GPS like a phone or smartwatch receives a signal from a satellite. Embedded in that signal is the time it was sent and the receiver knows when it was received. The difference in those times multiplied by the speed of light is the distance from the satellite. This is called pseudo-range. 
but knowing the travel time of just one signal isn't enough because the location could be anywhere in this circle of points, which are all the same distance from the satellite. Adding another satellite helps, but it's still not enough because these circles intersect at two points. A third satellite can pinpoint it, if you're 2D. In 3D, there's actually still two points it could be, but usually one is either way out in space or like deep inside the Earth, so we can usually cross one out. This is called trilateration. In reality, there are many satellites. AP2 often sees 30 or more. That's just the regular GPS stuff. What about the high accuracy stuff? See this thing? That's a base station. It's another GPS receiver which does not move. At the start, you do a base station survey to find its position with a certain degree of accuracy. I usually do one or two meter. Base station survey accuracy is not the relative position accuracy of the drone, which can be much better, centimeter level. Because the base station is stationary, any signal fluctuation is known to be error, which can be corrected and sent to the rover. But even better, the RTK can resolve what's called phase ambiguity. See how the signal is a squiggly line? That's because it's a radio wave. RTK can find which part of this wave it's at, the phase. Now if we find exactly how many wavelengths are between us and the satellite, we'll have a very accurate position. This is called integer ambiguity resolution, and once done, we have an RTK fix. The RTK fix can calculate the distance within a fraction of a wavelength using a signal sent from 12,500 miles away, which is pretty awesome. So let's go set up a base station and resolve the heck out of our carrier phase and wavelength integer ambiguities. I mean, how hard can it be? And honestly, it's not that hard. If, you know, you don't spend three days trying to get the wrong hardware to work. See these green bars? Each one is a signal from a satellite. And since I'm a complete noob, I really don't know what they're supposed to look like. But it's pretty obvious something is wrong because well, I can't get RTK fix. And with new hardware, this part can be kind of tricky. RTK fix is critical to this project. So I took a pretty desperate shotgun approach. I know the trees can block the signal, but that's why I'm at the wide open park in the first place. So that's not it. I also read about a thing called a ground plane, which is supposed to block reflected signals, but that didn't help either. As a kind of Hail Mary, I bought this other antenna. And when I plugged it in, so much better. I can't seem to find the specs, but I think my first antenna was not receiving all the frequency bands my receiver can handle, which are L1, L2, and L5. Most likely L5, which is a newer, higher power civilian band. And now that we're getting reliable RTK fix, it's time to test some waypoint missions. Overall, we're looking pretty good. If you look at this part here, I mean, that's my foot. That's like, you know, six inches. It's pretty good. But these missions were made manually by selecting points in Mission Planner. If we want to draw fancier stuff, we're going to need a better workflow. And that means, yep, software. Oh, quit whining. AI wrote it anyway. No, I mean, I fixed the thing with the... Ah, it's true. Okay, so here's the workflow. I thought about converting G-code points into latitude and longitude, partly because that just sounds cool. But G-code files have lots of points, so I decided instead to go more DIY here. I took a picture, and I trace it in a graphics program like Inkscape. There are ways to do this automatically, but I just think it works better when you just control all your own lines. And it's kind of fun, honestly. Then, the SVG goes into Python, where it's turned into points. Some advantages of this is that I can control my own point resolution, and it's easy to add my own commands in the middle of paths like turn the pump on or off. There it is. Then the points get turned into latitude and longitude, which are then converted into a waypoint file that I made to match other waypoint files. It also generates some graphs and maps, which are pretty helpful for troubleshooting. What am I troubleshooting, you may ask? Why is this circle an oval? And why is this thing 50 times bigger than it should be? And the oval was because I was converting regular XY coordinates into latitude and longitude. They have to be converted into a geographic coordinate first. So I want to make a dragon, like a big multicolor one at this old abandoned mall parking lot. 
which is going to be a pretty cool location, I think. Um, but before we do that, let's do some smaller scale testing just to make sure everything works right and that there's no bugs that come out and bite us in the middle of this huge drawing. So I like the butterfly shape because I think that, you know, kind of like the dragon, it's kind of long and flowy. And if there are any positional errors, I think we'll be less likely to see it with kind of, you know, an organic shape like this, as opposed to something that's like a strict rigid grid pattern or something. I don't know. At the park for some more testing. It is so hot out here. Yellow, now to set the pump flow rate. Look how close that is. Uh-oh, stuck again. It's a robot. It's, uh, it's gonna be a sidewalk chalk robot. Hell yeah, man. I don't think there can be much left. I hope not, because we're almost out of fluid. Then we're gonna take the drone up and see how it looks. So the butterfly was a great success. I mean, I wasn't even sure if the pump was gonna turn on and off at the right times. The dual nozzle thing didn't work very well. One side kept plugging up, but I can come up with something else for that. Also, it was becoming pretty clear that I definitely underestimated the amount of fluid needed. Abandoned stuff is cool. You can park wherever you want, and they just have a different feel. What a fun place. But I was here to get some work done, and I jumped right to it. And things were looking good until the wheels fell off the whole operation. Literally, the wheel fell off. Unless I can find the rest of this hardware out here, I think we're probably done for the day. All right, gonna have to call it today. Don't forget your lock washers. Very important. All right, it is 10 o'clock exactly. I think it's time to start. Tell you what, I'm starting to get the hang of this. Station doing its survey. I got the waypoints loading. Two things are happening. Might as well mix up some chalk. Okay, um, I feel like all I've been doing is refilling the thing. It's, I, I definitely underestimated how much fluid and cornstarch it's gonna need. It may have just enough to get done with this, the outline, but I'm definitely not gonna have enough uh, water and cornstarch for the, um, the accent colors, which are supposed to be blue. So do find a grocery store nearby here just to buy like a couple gallons of water and some cornstarch to make sure that I can finish it, which is okay. I think there's a grocery store real, real close to here. And I think I can do that because uh, as long as I remember and I save the base station location and I mark the location of the feet on the tripod, um, I think as long as I put the base station right back in the same spot and save it, and then uh, I tell the software that I'm using that same base station location, I think it can just pick up right where it left off, which is kind of a cool, um, a cool use of the GPS technology. Okay, we're headed to Meyer. There's one like four minutes away. I just realized I forgot to save the base station location of the software, which was the whole point of marking the feet of the base station. Dang it! Um, whoops. I need my windshield wipers on. Uh, maybe it's still in software. Maybe it's saved, and I can still, um, I can still just like save it because I don't think I closed the software. Okay, it might still be there. I'm not sure. Let me try some stuff. I saved it as possible location. I think that it would because when you do the survey, and then it says position is valid, I would think that's when it records your latitude and longitude. Not when you drive to Meyer after you validated your position. That wouldn't make much sense, right? Right? Wow. 
Wow. Now then, where were we? Oh yeah, let's put that base station right back and see how we do. It's really hot out here. Okay, off to waypoint 231. Good luck, my friend. Point 220. And once it says it gets there, I'm gonna stop it. Okay, it stopped. I'm gonna see if that's in a spot where it should be. <laughs> I think that's waypoint 220 right <clears throat> at the top of the head. That's like perfect. Good, good, good. So 220, it probably went 221, 22, 23, 24, 25. I set it to 225, I think. We're at 294. We got this one in the bag. Okay, now it's time for blue. I think the blue, the accents, are only like 90 waypoints or something, so that shouldn't be, shouldn't be nothing to it. This white car back here is definitely driving past, pointing at the lines, wondering what they are. Definitely. Hey, how you doing? Are you running with a pixel? Yes. I was happy to talk to my new friend, but unfortunately it meant that this is now a demo and therefore subject to the law of demos, which states basically that something is going to go wrong. It sits there and it keeps leaking fluid basically. Obviously a prototype. <laughs> yeah. You walk out there with me? I'll answer it. I was eventually able to get AP running again, but it had been a pretty long day and my cameras were pretty much dead, except for the one that mattered the most, the drone. I know it's not perfect. And trust me, those burnout marks, they bother me more than you. Oh well, lesson learned. And the blue is offset. Any of you experts have any thoughts? But for first steps, I think it's pretty cool. And of course I have a lot of other ideas and there's definitely no shortage of canvas. Thanks for watching guys.